want to quickly start off with saying, when I originally re uh, reviewed Batman v Superman, the theatrical version, I gave it a C plus. Uh, a couple of months afterwards, I was thinking I I put it did that grade didn't sit right with me. I I didn't think I was being that fair because I actually really enjoyed Batman v Superman a hell of a lot. I enjoyed it. Every time I went to see it, I think I seen it, it was either four or five times in the cinema. And every time I seen it, I just enjoyed it even more. So um, I just think I just wasn't being fair. And I think when it comes when it comes for me to when it comes to me grading films, I try to take into account obviously the technical aspect of the film, but also my enjoyment of the film. And I try to make a, a, you know a de the right balance between the two. And then that's when I try to come up with my grade. And I just think that. I was a little bit, little bit let down originally, and yeah, the film did have a lot of problems, but um, I just think that C plus grade just didn't f seem right, and which is why I'm changing that grade to a B minus. Yeah, it's only a tiny step up, but I think a B minus just sits, it sits more right with me. So that that's the theatrical version of Batman v Superman. I'm changing the grade from a C plus to a B minus. So we now have the Batman v Superman Ultimate Edition cut with 30 minutes of extra footage. And obviously this was announced before they released it in cinemas even. So we knew we were getting this cut. My biggest problem with the theatrical version of Batman v Superman was mainly the first two acts. I actually quite enjoyed the third act. I don't, from the top of my head, don't really have any major gripes or problems with that third act. But it was mainly the first two acts. And that was all down to the very choppy editing and the narrative of the film. It was just, it wasn't smooth and nothing just seemed to be, it was just, it was kind of very, um, it kind of threw out to the film. You know, the, the desert scene, for example, I'll always remember watching that for the first time and wondering, but well, where's the rest of it? You know, it, it, it was very obvious that there was, this, there were moments that had been cut from this film. And I would say mainly for the first 20 to 30 minute, minutes where it was at the, it is most obvious that there were uh, there was a lot of stuff cut from this movie the big question is does the extended extended cut actually repair those problems you know does it fix those problems for me and the answer is very clearly yes it does and i kind of hope it, i, well, I kind of had a feeling it would because i just found it odd to begin with, that uh, Zack Snyder announced this extended cut before the film was even released. So he was obvious, obviously very unhappy with the version that he was releasing in cinemas. And he must have begged Warner Brothers to, uh, for this extended cut and to actually be allowed to announce it before it was even released. Maybe I'm wrong, but it just felt a little odd to me that he announced it before it was actually even released in cinemas. So by injecting these extra 30 minutes in the film, does it make it a perfect film? No, it doesn't. But it does make it a better film and it makes it a much more of an enjoyable uh, viewing experience and a better viewing experience. And it also makes you wonder why the hell, or even why the fuck, did Warner Brothers remove this stuff? These moments where it helped build characters like Clark Kent and, Cl and Lewis Lane. And by getting those extra 30 minutes and you getting those extra scenes with Clark Kent, actually going to Gotham and in kind of investigating this Batman. And, you know, obviously he doesn't like the way that this Batman is doing things, his way of justice. And he's investigating this. And it gives reasoning to why Superman actually dislikes Batman. Because uh, I was always left wondering watching this in the theatre and um, I was like, they're not giving us a reason really to why Superman has this sort of kind of dislike towards Batman. Obviously you could understand why Batman hated, or Bruce Wayne even, hated Superman, but they weren't really, I mean, they didn't really give us much in the way of why Superman would have something against Batman. And obviously then the eventual confrontation, it's all manipulated by Lex Luthor. But just getting, putting those extra scenes in, just added all that impact. It does fill in those gaps of, you You never really know. The, the plot becomes so convoluted that it's like, you just kind of get lost. And the narrative is all over the place. So it's putting these moments back in and everything becomes a lot more clearer and understandable. And you understand where this film is going and where it leads into the third act. And it gives that third act... A much more you know a lot more meaning and a reason behind it and a lot more impact 
you know, emotionally as well. But I do, I do feel like by you know, in certain little scenes back in, you know, this is, you know, it makes it that it makes the story mean something, and it 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 is quite pivotal in leading up to the actual cli- into the third act. You know, Lewis Lane going, in, you know, just investigating this bullet. I think it fleshed out her character a hell of a lot more. And I actually really liked her character a lot more in this movie than I did in Man of Steel. I really, really, I, I really liked the performance as well by AD, Amy Adams. I think she was really good in this film. Uh, something I mentioned in my previous review was, think of, I, I always think of the story as being the pillars of the film. And I, I always remember when I was watching this film in the c- cinema, the story throughout the film, as you're going on into the film, these, these pillars that are holding the film up just start to crumble because you've got those scenes missing. But, but by injecting this all this footage back into the film, the story is now, you know, the film is held up because the story is there. The story has been fleshed out more. You know, the characters have been fleshed out more. And so the pillars now are actually quite strong and they're holding this film up. And I think this is definitely a much stronger film in this three hour version. And I really do do not understand. Well, I kind of do because at the end it's all down to money. But they really should have released this version in the cinemas. And I'm Warner Brothers, I, why are you doing it? And, you know, the story with the three hour version, the story's still a bit convoluted. You know, it, right, there is still one thing I'm bothered by. And that is, it never really explains why Lex Luthor knows the identity of Batman and Superman. But then, while I was watching the second viewing of the extended cut, it just came to me. He had the files, Lex Corp had files on all of the meta-humans, Aquaman, Cyborg, right? So he knows about these other, you know, these other beings. So, you know, Lex Luthor already knows, he's already aware of these other beings with, you know, special gifts and powers. So, in a way, that kind of, without actually directly telling you, that, this, you know, that's, it's kind of a lame reason, really, but Lex Luthor, if he knows about Cyborg and, and Aquaman, you know, then he's kind of going to know who's, you know, about, well, obviously know about Superman and Batman, but maybe know their identity. I don't know if that's me, you know, trying my hardest to find a reason to why Lex Luthor knows who Batman and Superman is. But, you know, he seemed to know about, you know, he seemed to know about the others, uh, as in, you know, Wonder Woman, Cyborg. So maybe, you know, he, we, but that does still bug me. So, yeah, we, we get extra moments in this, mainly mainly with Clark Kent, and there were a lot of extra stuff with Lewis Lane. I like that extra stuff with Lewis Lane, because, again, going back to adding impact to the third act, it added a, a lot more emotional impact, especially when um, Superman sacrifices himself. And um, it does, it pulls on my heartstrings. And I watched this recently um, and it I tried my hardest not to actually cry. I mean, call me stupid, call me weak, but um, I just find it quite emotional. And it all starts off when Superman looks at Lewis Lane and goes, I love you. Because what I see is a man that had, has gone so lost and frustrated with humanity. And, you know, he was trying his best to sort of, do the right thing and he realizes at that moment the only thing that he can do is sacrifice himself by saving his world which is Lewis Lane you know the person that he loves that is his world and he realizes at the last moment the only thing he's going to do to save that world is to sacrifice himself and it really and that's how it came across to me it might come across differently to other people but in that moment and in that scene that's how it would come across to me. And I think getting those extra scenes with Lewis Lane, especially in the first 30 minutes, it fleshes out your character more and it just adds more impact. And I just love that moment. There were also two moments added in the fight scene. Now, I'd heard in previous reviews that there wasn't actually anything new added into this, uh, into the actual fight scene, the confrontation between Batman and Superman. But I noticed two. Maybe, uh, maybe there are other people that have seen it, but I... But um, yeah, there are two of those. Uh, there's two moments, and that's when it's right, very really early on, and Batman and Superman actually flings Batman across the floor again, and he walks up to him, and I love the look he gives him before he uh, he throws him up into the building, he takes him all the way up, and then throws him into the bat light. I really like that. And there's also then the moment which I thought was a <laughs> kind of brutal. You know, you know the fight is brutal anyway, but it's when he drops him. 
down to the uh, down to the sort of kind of the lower floor, the lower level, and he lands, and you see you actually witness him land and scream in pain, and I was like, whoa, uh, you know, that's it is very brutal. I think kids are not gonna, you know, this is a definitely a film not for kids. And there's a, and there's a few little things added throughout the film. Then in more so in the third act, it's, it's kind of small things, and in the second act, kind of you know there are smaller moments. But it does make it a much more you know a better, much more enjoyable and a better viewing experience. I also really like that nightmare scene. Um, very Mad Max, but I just really like the way that scene was shot, especially when you have got the camera that follows Batman back out from the lorry. And as he fights his way through the soldiers, and I just loved that the camera just, it was all one take. And I really loved that moment, and I really loved the look of Nightmare Batman. I just, I really dug that scene. And there were a few very small, su subtle moments added in, and a bit more violence, like blood splatter. But that was about it, but I, I do really enjoy that scene. One thing I really liked about Batman v Superman, and... That is the foundation that is built upon, which is the, the last, the final act or the final moments of Man of Steel. And a lot of people complained about, uh, you know, the destruction that occurs or the destruction that happens as a result of Superman trying to defeat General Zod. And I I'm glad, I'm kind of like that. They, it was quite clever that they kind of built upon those criticisms and, you know, what people are complaining about, and that's what this kind of the first two acts of this film is all about, and it's like it's very, you know it's a very it's almost like a political thriller, and I really enjoyed it. I mean, you know you are it's like it, it gives you that big question of Superman. If this is you know if Superman did really exist in the real world, shouldn't we have to set boundaries? I mean, shouldn't he be governed by the government, maybe? I mean, you have all those sort of questions. And in, in the end of Man of Steel, yeah, you know, him battling General Zod was the result, of, you know, of all our destruction and many more lives being lost. But um, in this, a lot of that is actually manipulated by Lex Luthor. But I kind of like that they kind of built the foundation of this film on those criticisms. And I think that was very smart because I, for one, didn't have a problem with uh, that last act of Man of Steel, I actually quite enjoyed it, and I could understand. Yeah, there was there was a lot of destruction, and yeah, probably a lot more lives lost as a result of Superman battling General Zod. But you know, I was trying to think of it in from a kind of a reality or a realistic point of view. Like this, you know, you've got these two kind of really big badass, you know, superhumans, you could say, or meta humans. And they're battling it out. And he, Superman's got to try and stop Zod. But Superman does not want to kill Zod. And they make that very clear. You know, it's very clear. He did, you know, especially when he's holding him in that state. I think it's the train station. And he's grabbing him by the neck. And he's telling him, no, you know, don't do it. And it's like, you know, it's either save humanity and kill Zod in that moment. Or do, don't kill Zod and just let him continue to destroy humanity. And... For me, there was enough reasons in there to why, you know, we, what, what we had in our last act of Man of Steel. You know, I didn't feel like they needed to really justify it. But, well, I thought it was very smart that they used those criticisms from fans. You know, that feedback from fans. And they used that as the foundation for the story of this film. Uh, Batman v Superman. You know, I, I, all those political sort of questions, I just, I, I really enjoyed that. And this extended version adds a lot more, you know, a lot of those moments in it. And it makes it, it makes it more, a bit more sense. Because I could tell when I was watching the theatrical version of this film, this is what the film was trying to be. But it just felt like it was rushing. He was trying to rush to get to that confrontation. And all I could see was Warner Brothers going, give us the money. Give us the money. Come on, it's only two and a half hours. It's, you know, let's get more people in. Let's get more asses on the seat. And get some more money, you know, you know pockets like. And um, sadly, that's how the theatrical version did feel. But this extended version just makes this a hell of a lot of, you know, a, a much better film. Now, I did mention Lex Luthor in my review for the theatrical version of this, but I'm going to mention him again because I'm hearing so many people who really kind of hate uh, Jesse Eisenberg's uh, performance as Lex Luthor. And um, I'm one of those very few, I think, that actually liked it, but in a weird sort of way. And uh, let me explain. His performance is really annoying. 
Um, it really made... I'm not a massive fan of Jesse Eisenberg anyway. I find Jesse Eisenberg annoying in almost everything I've seen him in. But in this, he's even more noisy, annoying. And he, you know, he, he does this very quirky thing with a character, with the stutters and all that, and he just gets sudden outbursts. But I liked it, because it actually made me hate the character Luke, Lex Luthor even more. And at the end of the day, Lex Luthor is a villain, and you are meant to hate the villain. And by casting Jesse Eisenberg, or who, to me, is annoying anyway, and to have him, you know, play this character like like he does, like, and it just makes it even more annoying, and it made me really hate him. And when you actually finally get him in the in the cell at the end with Batman, it just it really made me feel. It makes it gives that sort of gratifying sort of feel, you know, that's like yes, we've got you sort of thing. And that's why I don't mind Lex Luthor in this. And I don't mind Jesse Eisenberg playing Luthor. So I liked the way he played him because it made me hate him. And I do think his performance was quite quirky. Like with the sudden outbursts and that. Personally, I preferred Kevin Spacey's Lex Luthor. But it's when you get that Martha moment. They, you know, Batman is all, it's just brought back from the brink. Script. You know, the script is probably one of the weakest points of this film and it's one of the reasons why this film is not perfect and and that is the script and the writing. The writing is not quite, you know, it's it's very dodgy in places and um, it could have been a hell of a lot better, especially that scene with Batman and Superman. I mean, that could have been written a hell of a lot better. But overall, I mean, for me, you know, this film was also about these two characters, you know, being worn down and... They're about to really kind of show what they are capable of and, you know, actually hit that low, very low level of doing something that they probably would or might regret. And um, they brought back from the brink in that moment. And it's, it's almost as if... And I love it that, you know, Batman realises he's got a chance to actually save Martha. And the way he says that line, like, Martha's not going to die tonight. And I really, really like that. And it, it makes that scene a hell, you know, so much more impactful where he goes into that warehouse and he's knocking shit out of everyone. I absolutely love that scene. That's, I think for me personally, one of the best Batman fight scenes ever. I just really, really love that scene of him going through that warehouse. And it's almost like it, it was very inspired by the looks of it of the Arkham games and the way he kind of picks up the crates and throws them. And I just, I just really liked the entire look of that scene and the way he fought in that scene. It was really, really, really good. And yeah, just with the just as as it was with the theatrical version, I love all the scenes with Batman in and Alfred in and Wonder Woman during the fight with Doomsday. I mean, a lot of people kind of not, don't like that fight, that particular confrontation with Doomsday. I actually really enjoyed it. I mean, I was playing it on my home cinema system a couple of days ago, the extended version, of course. And you had all those kind of extra moments in there as well. And I, and I just really liked it. I really liked the sound effects and the music and everything. I just really, really enjoyed it. And I, I really, I just really liked that fight. Especially with Wonder Woman. The way she just flung around and she kind of just laughs and shrugs it off. And she gets back in there. It really does make me smile and I really, really enjoy it. So yeah, Batman v Superman Extended Edition. Um... I really, really liked it. I gotta be honest with you, I could probably talk a hell of a lot more about this film. Um, I've, pro I've probably gone on a bit too long as it is. I am trying to keep my reviews as short as possible. And I probably will at some point maybe do another sort of video that really kind of go, you know, where I can really kind of discuss this film because I do think Batman v Superman is a lot, it's a, it's a very smart film and a, a very misunderstood film. And this film is a lot deeper than I think people realise it was. And I would like to really go into that at some point. But um, I really, really appreciate this film. I enjoyed it more and more. Yeah, the film still has problems. You know, this 30 minutes doesn't really make it a perfect film. I mean, there were little things, but I, I was happier with it. And I just really wish that this was what they released, first of all. I mean, this is, this is the version that they had released. Um, it's not quite a day and night a scenario like a lot of people have said i mean it's still the same film um but all those problems that i had which the big problems which was you know there was obviously moments missing and character moments missing and character development and you know there, there being a reason why superman has this dislike 
towards Batman. I mean, all that was fixed with this version and it made me feel a lot more satisfied. And um, I'm proud to say that the, my grade, my final grade for what I think is the definitive version of this film, unless we get the four-hour version, of course. I would really like that. Zack Snyder, Warner Brothers, please, can we have this four-hour version? Um, my final grade will be a B plus. I'm really happy that I've been able to actually up my grade that much um, for Batman v Superman. I, you know, I was kind of, I was hoping that this version would actually make it a much more enjoyable experience. It did, and it, you know, it, it made, it did, does make it a better film. It doesn't make it a perfect film, but it does make it a better film. Again, I don't have an issue with the tone. That I have no problem with the tone, and I don't know why Warner Brothers are kind of like, I don't think that was the reason behind it, to be honest with you. I, I just think a lot of people were turned off by the message that this film was trying to convey. I don't think a lot of people quite understood what this about this film. And I think that's one of the reasons why he didn't quite make the money that they wanted it to. But um, at the end of the day, this is not all about the money. And I do really think when I watched this film, this film was def definitely has... You could, you could just see the heart... That's in it. You know, there's definitely love in this film. You know, the director definitely has love for the material and a love for the characters, and that's what matters to me. You know, a story that actually has you know a deep meaning, which this does, I believe, and um, it was there, and you could you could see the love, and you know, I was happy with it. I mean, yeah, it's again, it's not perfect, but um, I think a B B plus is a it's the right grade for this film and this version anyway. Uh, thank you again for watching. I'm going to be seeing Suicide Squad Sunday evening. I can't wait. I'm so excited to see that. And I'll hopefully have a review up for that early next week. Thank you again for watching. If you like what you see, please hit subscribe. And please feel free to leave a comment below. Thanks for watching and I'll be seeing you guys all soon.